Fellow explorers, we recently came back from a six day road trip in California's Central Valley. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you 23 things you might not know about California Central Valley. By the way, if this is your first time here, I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This is a live stream, so if you're on the live stream, I look forward to interacting with you, taking your questions, hearing your thoughts about some of these things. Maybe you already knew them. Maybe there's some things you don't know. And if you're watching the archive, well, de may definitely hit me up with those same things in the comments. So let's go ahead and go on to the first uh, interesting fact about California Central Valley, and that is it's big. The Central Valley is big. How big is California Central Valley? Well, let's put up a picture right here. This is California Central Valley uh, long. It is 450 miles long from Bakersfield in the south to Redding in the north. That's 720 kilometers wide. It's that orange area that you see there <clears throat> wide. It is about 50 miles wide. And the California Central Valley covers 11% of California's land area. Now, how long did it take us to go through this whole California Central Valley? I mentioned we did it in six days. We put, so I mentioned it's 450 miles long. We put 1,200 miles on our car because we started uh, in our hometown, Orange County, drove up there, drove through it. Um, you know, many people drive through it in a day going from LA to San Francisco, but definitely worth a visit. And these things are things that I, I didn't just pull these off website. Sites, I say that one of the best ways to learn about the destination is not just by reading a book, but is in fact to visit these places. So these are some things we didn't know before we went, so I thought they might be some things that you might not have known either. So let's go ahead and go on to number two. The second interesting fact about California Central Valley it is that it is one of the most productive agricultural growing regions in the world. What's one of their biggest tourism areas in the Central Valley? Agritourism. What's agritourism? Tourism to see agriculture. Uh, more than half of the fruits, vegetables, and nuts grown in the United States of America are grown in California Central Valley. So on another way to look at that is that on in the USA, it is less than 1% of the total country's farmland, but it produces more than 8% of the country's uh, agricultural products output by value. So a very productive agricultural growing region. Uh, and the other big draw to the area, actually I'm gonna go back to the previous picture that I was showing you, make that big again. The other big draw to the area in addition to agriculture are the three national parks in the area. Actually there's four, we'll hit the fourth one in a moment. But the three that you would hit from here are Sequoia National Park, Kings Canyon National Park, and Yosemite National Park. Death Valley, just on the other side of Sequoia, so you could sort of connect it to a Central Valley vacation, but you do have to go over a mountain range to get there, so you really end up going to Death Valley if you kind of go like down south to Bakersfield and then come around. <clears throat> All right, the third interesting fact about California Central Valley, I mentioned agri tourism, agriculture is a big thing here, and the Central Valley is heaven for almond lovers it is proudly known as the world's almond capital. In fact, 80% of all almonds grown in the world are grown in California Central Valley. If you've eaten an almond recently, chances are it's from California Central Valley. What do I have back here? I have some of the almond products that we picked up as we were there that I'll be talking about as we go through here, but we picked up some really interesting, uh, tasty almond foods, and we are still eating our way through all of the almond things that we brought back. One of the things is definitely almond butter. Like peanut butter, I didn't realize almond butter was just crushed almonds. It is, and it's quite tasty. I'll tell you, we've been enjoying that. And of course, all of the like um, toffee almonds, butter almonds, coated almonds, delicious. The fourth interesting fact about California Central Valley is that <clears throat> While Napa and Sonoma nearby are known around the world for their wines, did you know that California Central Valley is actually the state's largest wine producing region? In fact, 75% of California's grape varieties are grown 
in California's Central Valley. So it's another great place, not just if you like nuts, fruits, vegetables, but also some really great wine to be had in the region. We spent, uh, after the honey tasting that you saw, if you watched our video about must-eat foods, we also did mead tasting. What's mead? It is basically wine made with honey, which is pretty good. And of course, we brought back some of that honey as well to have later. Honey's pretty tasty. Uh, okay, uh, but before I go on the number five, I want to hit a few of the comments. Uh, Brandon says, it's going to take you a while to eat uh, for sure. And this isn't even like all of, I mean, this is maybe one tenth or one twentieth of the stuff we brought back. We've got this huge bag of all the food we brought back uh, from our trip. Brown and Butter Beachy, why doesn't that show up? Uh, Brown and Butter Beachy says uh, you can make almond milk by blending water with almond butter. All right, that's good to know. Um, Stamford Bridge says uh, those are phenomenal national parks, some of the most stunning scenery on earth. Uh, they are indeed beautiful. We've not visited all of them. We got really close to Sequoia, went to Visalia, but we hope to we hope to hit up those national parks on a future trip. Uh, Brandon says, and that's why we need rainy seasons for the agriculture for sure. And in fact, it rains more in the Central Valley than it rains uh, in like Southern California. When we were coming back our last day on the trip, it was raining in the Central Valley in Bakersfield, like pouring cats and dogs. Uh, and then we got over the mountain range that goes through like Six Flags Magic Mountain. They call it the grapevine. On the LA side, you'd have no idea that there was like a torrential rainstorm over there. Torrentials, maybe not the right word, but definitely a lot more rain. Um, Points Traveler says, what's the weather temperature like in the inland region as opposed to the coastal region? Uh, in the summer, probably a little warmer, probably a little uh, drier than uh, the coastal region. But still... Um, Nice part, really no mosquitoes in the Central Valley. So uh, we found it a bit cooler also than Southern California, uh, which you need to grow a lot of the produce there. Christina says, how much worth of almonds do you think you spent? Probably a couple hundred dollars. We probably spent a couple hundred dollars on almonds. We brought back a lot of, we made it a thing to get almonds from like every farm stand we went to, like every city that we went to. And we're kind of going through a whole thing to be like, which are our favorite almonds? And then uh, we're like, oh, we'll probably, Probably order some more of those almonds later. Um, and uh, Stanford Bridge says, yeah, when it gets hot, it gets hot. Scorching. Uh, and uh, Vanny says, so hot. Yeah, in the summer, quite, quite hot. It's California is definitely that way. That If you get far from the beach in the summer, then it gets quite warm. All right, let's get back to the interesting facts. Thank you for those comments. The fifth interesting fact about California Central Valley is going to come to us from Bakersfield. So uh, I hit a, just kind of those first four facts. They were about the region in general. Now I'm going to hit some interesting facts about some of the cities that we went to. And uh, the first city we stopped at was Bakersfield. And you know what? Bakersfield actually put together this brochure about interesting facts about Bakersfield. Chris, did you just pull these facts from this fact sheet? No. But one of the facts on here is that the two largest Carrot growers in the nation are located in Bakersfield. Did you know? I didn't know that. We didn't see any carrot growers, so that's not on the list. But what we did see is we saw uh, one of the nation's largest oil fields. I'm going to make this bigger so you can tell what we are looking at here. Those are all oil pumps. And Bakersfield is home to the fifth largest oils field in the United States of America. It is called the Kern River Oil Field, and this oil field makes up over 10,000 acres, uh, or if you're on the metric system, that is 43 square kilometers. Who gets all this oil? It's principally operated by Chevron, and there are over 9,000 wells that pump oil. The deepest well here goes down 7,000 feet, or about 2,000 meters, and uh, we learned all about Bakersfield's oil history at what they call the Kern County Museum. And they have like a whole uh, exhibition just about oil. It's really, I never knew there was so much to learn about oil and the history of it in California. And I've never uh, seen a scene quite like that. Number six, Bakersfield is a city of 400,000 people. And it used to have the most Basque restaurants in all of the USA. 
in Bakersfield. Uh, okay, New York City now has one more than Bakersfield does, so still a quite a second most Basque restaurants of any city in the U.S. What is Basque food? Uh, Basque cuisine is from the north of Spain, so lots of seafood, things like that. Interesting, a lot of Basque people set are settled in Bakersfield, so if you're looking for kind of unique cuisine that you don't find in many other places, Bakersfield for the Basque food. Chris, did you have the Basque food? Look, we only really had one meal in Bakersfield, and it was barbecue. Uh, it was tri-tip. It was delicious. Our second meal would have been Basque cuisine, but we didn't quite get there. Seventh interesting fact about the Central Valley, also about Bakersfield, is um, that uh, Bakersfield has a signature sound. You know, last week I was talking all about hotels, and uh, somebody said they really liked a few of the Hyatt chains because they have signature scents. They have their own scent. Well, Bakersfield has its signature sound. It's called the Bakersfield Sound. Kind of cool to have a city that has its own sound. The Bakersfield Sound came from this place, Buck Owens Crystal Palace. It's essentially a variant of country music. Uh, I also had no idea that Bakersfield was such a hub for country music. Uh, this place, uh, this Crystal Palace that was started by Buck Owens, he was uh, famous from the show Hee Haw. Uh, Garth Brooks has played here. Taylor Swift has played in Bakersfield. At this Crystal Palace, Dwight Yoakam, the Dixie Chicks, Tim McGraw, and Faith Hill. So if you're look, if you like country music, this is a great place to go for kind of an intimate showing. Even like the the bar in it has like a like a Cadillac in it. I mean, it's like it's a really interesting place too. And just in addition to the restaurant, it has like a museum to country music. Uh, oh, and John also said in addition to that Bakersfield Sound Corn, the uh, musical group Corn, the new metal group K O R N comes from Bakersfield. Uh, Gala says I have many relatives living in uh, Bakersfield. Been to the Basque restaurant there. I lived there in 67, 68. Welcome, Gala. How was the how was the Basque restaurant? What should people get if they're going to go to the Basque restaurant? And Kathy points out that that looks huge. Why is the oil so expensive now? I I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and Brandon says, I've seen, oh, if it was in Oklahoma, but this it's super big and it's neat. There's this park that you can see it from that elevation that I took the picture from. So, you know, you're not just kind of like looking at it through a fence. Uh, Mike wants to know, why the panda? Why the panda, Mike? Uh, you should watch my video that I did a couple weeks ago about 50 interesting facts about me. Oh, baby, do I talk in there about the panda? No, I don't think I do. I talk about the panda in my frequently asked questions video. If you search for Yellow Productions FAQ, you will find it. But shortly, uh, I'm Chris. He's Topher, the panda, the panda. I'm Chris. He's Topher. Together we make Christopher. Um, and that's it. He's my uh, panda brother. Uh, so we speak. Um, Brown and Beachy says, I've learned so much from your travel videos over the years. Thank you. Thank you, Brown and Beachy. I appreciate it. All right. Let's go on to facts from the next town we visited, which was Visalia, which is just to the north of Bakersfield. So looking here on a map, Bakersfield is just down to the south. We're going up north. We see Visalia. Um, Visalia is the closest major city to Sequoia National Park. It is just 36 miles to the west of Sequoia National Park. Uh, and of course, when I say it's the closest major city, that's if you consider a city of a population of 140,000 major. In the Central Valley, that's a major city. Uh, but actually, Visalia is a great place to stay if you're looking to go to Sequoia or Kings Canyon National Park because there's not a lot of lodging in the park and it fills up quite a bit in the summer. But Visalia has a ton of great hotels. Um, one that we stayed at called the Darling video review on that hotel coming out soon. It was a refurbished uh, 1930s courthouse. First time I've ever stayed in a hotel room that used to be a courthouse. I'm glad I was there for um, sleeping, not because I was locked up, but was because we actually uh, paid to stay there. The ninth interesting fact is that Visalia is also home to a sequoia tree. Now, sequoia trees don't really live many places outside of the national parks and outside of the mountains, but there is one here in downtown Visalia right next to the post office. Uh, and in fact, it was planted in downtown Visalia in 1936 um, by the superintendent of General Grant National Park. That was the name of Sequoia National Park at the time. Uh, and they planted two trees which were three years old when they were planted. They were 
um, brought there from Grant Grove in General Grant National Park, now Sequoia National Park. Uh, fortunately, one of them didn't make it, but one of them stands today. Uh, and in addition to the superintendent of National Park, it was also the postmaster they kind of joined together. Why are these here? Because it was the people of Visalia that were really instrumental in getting Sequoia designated a national park. And so they like to basically share that history to say, hey, we were influential in protecting these trees by having one right in downtown that you could visit. Uh, the Uniplex asks if this was my first trip to the Central Valley, sort of, second trip. Uh, but first trip was just to prepare for the audio tour uh, that I made for the almond blossoms in Modesto. Uh, so I went up there to scout all that out um, and work on the script and things we were gonna say for that. I had to do that before the almond blossoms were there, uh, but that was just to visit Modesto for that tour. And then this was our first trip that we took to go through the whole valley. Um, uh, Stanford Bridge thinks I'm pronouncing Visalia. Visalia? Vis Visalia. Visalia? Visalia. I am probably mispronouncing it. Um, John asks if oranges are also a big thing out there or is it a Florida thing? In fact, oranges are a huge thing in California. I think... I didn't put this... Is this, is this a fact that I have on here? I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out if I put this one on here. I don't think I did... And people always say, Chris, don't quote wrong facts. So I think California grows more oranges than Florida does. Um, but yeah, oranges are a huge thing in California Central Valley. You'll see orange trees all around, oranges for sale. Um, one, one of the places that we got almonds from in Bakersfield called California Fruit Depot, um, in addition to selling almonds, sold a ton of oranges. Uh, number 10 is that uh, it's also possible to visit all three of the national parks uh, in three days. So maybe people look at the map and go, hey, those are far apart. But you can visit Sequoia National Park, Kings Canyon National Park, and Yosemite National Park with Visalia as your base. Uh, they call it the Majestic Mountain Loop. Uh, and so we hope to we hope to do that sometime in the future. Uh, Brandon says, I would love to see the Sequoia trees too. Point Traveler says, fighting word for Florida. They are fighting word for Florida. If there's someone on the live stream from Florida that wants to punch back and be like, Chris, you don't, you don't know nothing. You don't know nothing about no oranges. We got the oranges here in Florida. All right, let's move on to the next city. Let's move on to Fresno. Fresno, to the north of Visalia, uh, has a population of 535,000. Fresno is the third largest majority Hispanic city in the United States with 50.5% of its population being Hispanic in 2020. So if you're looking for some good Hispanic food, definitely uh, check out Fresno. Also, one of the most iconic Fresno attractions is this postage stamp mural that you can find in downtown Fresno. Every city that we went to, we went to try to find the, like what's the most iconic spot in each city to like take a selfie in front of because we're huge dorks and like to take our selfies. Now, Fresno, in addition to having a neat postage stamp, is also referred to often as the raisin capital of the world. That's right, dried grapes, the raisin capital of the world. Uh, in fact, the Sun Made Raisin Company is based in Fresno. That's the red uh, packages of raisins that you probably had as a kid, little box, things like that. Uh, they also had a minor league baseball team in Fresno called the Raisin Eaters. Uh, this picture is the current team that's there, the Fresno Grizzlies, to kind of pay homage to back in the day. They wore some Raisin Eaters uniforms for a while. Um, and uh, the Point Traveler says, what hotels do you recommend in the Central Valley? The ones we stayed at were pretty good, um, and the reviews of them are going to come out over the next week and a half, so you'll see that whole list pretty soon. But if you watch my travel vlog, I mentioned all the names in there. Um, that's probably the, the best way to find them or just stay tuned for those reviews. They'll also be in the Central California playlist. Uh, we didn't have one bad hotel in our stay. Uh, but we also, side note, when we were looking at hotels, we, particularly for this trip, kind of like stayed at non-chain hotels. Um, you know, I like Hyatt's and Marriott's and this and that, um, Park Hyatt's and JW Marriott's, and there aren't 
a lot of those in the Central Valley. And they're also, just with like COVID times, you know, a lot of the big chain hotels have, I feel like the big brands have really been like skimping on service and a lot of the things that make uh, like good reasons to stay at those places. So we decided to take this trip and say, let's stay at some more interesting kind of like boutique hotels. The the Padre Hotel that we stayed at in Bakersfield and the review just came out yesterday on that one. Uh, it was built in like the 1930s and has this great history. Some people say it's haunted. I don't know about that. We didn't see any ghosts. We stayed in the courthouse hotel. So it was actually neat to stay at some hotels that don't look like a just a standard business hotel with a desk and a bed, but have some classic history to them. Uh, Gala says Fresno has the best Mexican food uh, in, Can in Canada. Canada, California, of course. I, I think the Mexican food is pretty good in California. Um, John asks, if we'd ever consider doing bed and breakfast, especially with the traveling princess. You know, one of the problems with bed and breakfasts is the walls are often thin, so I'd be afraid we'd be uh, like disturbing our neighbors, and then the rooms can sometimes be small. Like it is nice, hotel-wise, to have like a big room and a lot of place to spread out. We've stayed at bed and breakfast before. I, I personally don't love bed and breakfast; they're just a little too small for me. I like bigger, bigger places to stay. If your room's broken, something's broken in there, you can move in another room. Though sometimes it is the nice part about bed and breakfasts if you're in a small one, like when you're at breakfast chatting with the owners, the people there who run it, if it's a small one, to be like, what should we see? What should we do? That's kind of neat. Um, oh, the Uniplex says, I love the colors of the train. I haven't mentioned what train this is. Or why are we talking about this? This is the uh, 13th interesting fact about California Central Valley. It's about Fresno. And that is that California's high speed rail, this is the train that's coming to California, eventually. Uh, it started in downtown Fresno. That's right. The groundbreaking ceremony for California's high-speed rail system was at the location of the future downtown Fresno station for California's high-speed rail. When was that groundbreaking? Seven years ago, January 6, 2015. And it was also neat because we've heard like um, that the, you know, the, it's never going to be built. It's not going anywhere. But we actually saw when we were driving along the Highway 99, we saw the bridges for it. It was like, it's in progress. So it's coming here. Mm. By the way, what am I drinking today? I decided to go for something agriculturally. So today I'm drinking some watermelon juice. Mm. Christina asks... Would you stay at more boutique hotels in the future or do you still favor big chains? Maybe it's 50-50. Christina, I'm going to say 50-50. I think um, as assuming that the big chains are still going down their path of uh, cost cutting and no room service and cutting off their nose to spite their face, then we're definitely going to stay at more of the boutique hotels that actually um, want to be hotels and are like really want people to stay there. So that was uh, that was how I felt about those places. And Point Traveler points out no lounges at the bed and breakfast. One of the things I like about Merritt Height Hilton's are the executive lounges, the concierge lounges, and when those are closed, the value proposition just isn't there for me. All right. The 14th interesting fact about California Central Valley, we are now moving to Modesto. Um, Modesto has a population of 200,000. That's not the interesting fact. The interesting fact is that the center of the almond industry is in Modesto. The Almond Board of California, these are the people who own almonds.com. If you see advertising just for almonds, uh, it is uh, likely out of the Almond Board of California. Blue Diamond, company you see right there, Blue Diamond, um, Blue Diamond, the company that makes like almost all the almonds that you see in any supermarket, uh, they uh, have a significant facility and a neat gift shop in Modesto. And there's also some really neat almond farms there. I'm curious, uh, just for anybody on the live stream or anybody watching the archive, did you take my almond tour, the driving tour we put together uh, where like, you get a mobile app, it's got a map, it like gives you direction, tells you where to go. It's an hour and a half listening to Chris in your car, tell you about almonds, interviewing some locals. If you did, I'm curious to know what you thought about it. Uh, and if you didn't and you want to see the almond blossoms next year, definitely check that out. That app uh, and the tour is going to be there next year too. Ginny Fied says, my stepsister and her family live in Modesto, would love to go see the almond trees in bloom during a visit with them next year. Put it on your put it on your calendar. 
February, March, Wayfair app. Go check it out. Go check it out. It'll be fine. I'd love to hang out with you in your car. Uh, Mike Hess says, I'm mixing orange juice with almond honey. That sounds good, too. Almond honey. All right. Excellent. A little bitter honey. Uh, and Chris points out, if you haven't yet, please hit the like button. There's 100 people on the live stream, 47 likes. Please hit the like button. Every thumbs up helps provide some premium bamboo to the Yellow Productions crew back there. And let me tell you, they are hungry and they, they need more than almonds. They need bamboo. The 15th interesting fact about California Central Valley is that Modesto is the home to the longest covered bridge west of the Mississippi River, and this is a picture of it right here. Uh, this bridge uh, was built in 1863, and it spans 330 feet across this river right here. It originally operated as a toll bridge when it was built. The tolls ranged from two cents for pigs and sheep to five dollars if you had a uh, horse or mule teams if you were uh, taking a camel across this bridge it was two dollars uh, while a dollar would cover most other undomesticated animals elephants however carried a three dollar toll to cross this bridge back in the day uh, it Cars could drive around it, though it did close to automotive traffic in 1981. Uh, but it's uh, like part of a park there now, uh, and you can cross it on foot, take some cool pictures of it. So that's pretty neat. Why, did you ever wonder why? Like, why did they cover bridges? They cover bridges when bridges were made of wood. Putting the roof on it made the bridges last a lot longer. I guess that makes a lot of sense because it kept um, water off of the roadway. Uh, all right. And uh, Mauricio says, I took the almond tour and I loved it, Chris. Mauricio, awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for taking that tour. Hopefully, I did. Hopefully an hour and a half of Chris in your car wasn't too much for you. Stanford Bridge says, I have a few almonds every morning on cereal yogurt. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. This is not sponsored by the Almond Board of California. So all good. And I, ever since we've been having all of these almonds um, I've been having an almond every day. Another thing we've been having every day, OC Girl wanted to make sure I uh, showed this on the live stream and ate it because she's been addicted to these things. Uh, Dewar's Fine Candies. These come from Bakersfield. We had a whole box of it. I've only got a couple left. So I've, I've got like one one sad candy in it because there, there aren't that many left. But I saved this one for the live stream. It... Um, I don't know. It's kind of like a taffy, but it's not really a taffy. It's this chewy thing uh, that has an almond in the center of it. And it's really quite good. Uh, uh, There's some almonds in there. We're definitely going to get these next time we're in Bakersfield. Mmm. Alex says those are so delicious. These, you've had these, Alex. We are addicted to them now. And we're almost running out, so we'll probably have to figure out how we get more. All right, speaking of buying things, Modesto is also home to the oldest operating general store in California. So it's right near that bridge in a town called Knights Ferry. Knights Ferry has a population of 100. Why is the town called Knight's Ferry? Well, before that bridge was built, there was a ferry that would go back and forth across that river. Um, and so where there's a ferry where you can cross the river, makes a great place to have a store. Uh, they still heat this store with a wood burning stove. It's got a saloon in the back and um, the town, population 100, they have a post office, but I've never seen anything like this before. It is a volunteer post office. Um, like. They don't have employees from the United States Postal Service. Instead, they have volunteer people who live in the town that operate the post office. I thought that was kind of cool. Now, the town's post office also serves ice cream and is also the town's library. I guess when you only have 100 people, you kind of need to double or triple up on these things. Uh, Jenny Fied says, I have heard of Dewar's, but I haven't seen them in a long time. Uh, they look delicious. And uh, Junia says, those are bomb. There's different flavors. Uh, it's, yeah, I guess it says on the back, there's um, peanut butter, almond, peppermint, caramel, pistachio. 
Uh, I guess those are the flavors. So yeah, we'll need to try out some of those other flavors. I bet they're good. We got almond because we were in sort of an almond mood. It was, you know, almond blossom season. All right, let's go to number 17. Let's go to the next town to the north that we stopped in, which was Stockton. Stockton is a town with a population of 300,000, and it is home to California's most inland deep water port. I had no idea that being in the Central Valley, there'd be a port there. Chris, I don't understand. How there could there be a port? Those ships are on the ocean. You know what? There's a series of waterways that goes from Stockton all the way out to the San Francisco Bay and all the way out to the ocean, 75 miles inland. It is the fourth busiest port in California for cargo ships. Ships from 50 countries dock in Stockton, but no container ships. Um, so if it doesn't fit on a container, people often opt to put in Stockton because you've heard of the big backups that we've had in like Long Beach or things like that. Um, no backups in Stockton. So uh, a lot of people trying to ship stuff that don't want to wait in Long Beach are like, how can I ship it and not put it in a container so I can get it to uh, Stockton instead. And so the way that Stockton actually kind of got like, uh, like a big city is during the gold rush. Um, you know, a lot of people from the gold rush came from the east coast of the USA to California, but a lot of people came by ship. They came from Mexico, they came from Europe, they came from all over. Uh, and so the best place, most inland place to land your ship was Stockton. And so the town got really big from all the people wanting to buy their gold mining supplies, people coming in on steam ships. 18th interesting fact about California Central Valley is that the largest display of Buddhist statues in California is in Stockton. Uh, it tells the story of Buddha, and it really feels like something you'd see in Thailand, not in California. I was amazed to see uh, an attraction like this. I think it's one of these like super unknown things. Somebody um, on one of my videos commented and said, Chris, you're the new Huell Hauser. Well, you know what? Huell Hauser, that did the show California's Gold, also did a segment on uh, this temple uh, in Stockton. Uh, yeah, and Jenny Fied said Stockton is a port. Who knew? Who knew? Exactly. We didn't know. Uh, we actually, this is one of the things, like, things you learn from being in a place. We were eating at this restaurant called Garlic Brothers that were on the water, and we're just sitting there going like, I wonder what that water is. I wonder where it goes. And the guy sitting right next to us was like, did you know Stockton is California's most inland port? There's ships that he's like, I have a boat here. That's why I'm here, because I can get my boat out to them. I'm like, whoa, I had no idea. So it's kind of neat. Just things you learn sitting at dinner, talking to people that are sitting next to you. Um, all right, uh, Stanford Bridge points out that George Lucas grew up in Modesto. He sure did, uh, and his first major film, American Graffiti, was set there, and it sure was. It was set there. Unfortunately, it wasn't actually filmed there, but uh, the movie is set in uh, Modesto. Speaking of almonds, have you ever noticed how the Millennium Falcon looks kind of like an almond, the ship from Star Wars? Now you will. Now you will. All right. Uh, 19. Uh, last Stockton fact is that uh, Stockton also has a really amazing art museum called the Hagen Museum. It has been around since 1931. It's relatively unknown as far as I can tell. We never heard of this art museum, um, but they've got big names like art from Ren Renoir and um, like R Rodin, you know, who did like the, the thinker. Uh, there's also lots of other famous American art too, art that hung uh, in the White House. Uh, we took we took a one hour tour of the museum and we we were super impressed. Of course, we didn't have more time to stay longer, but it was really neat to see that in Stockton because who who knew that there'd be this uh, like famous super famous art museum in in the middle of California that way. The twentieth interesting fact: it's about Sacramento. I've got one. I've mentioned Sacramento, state capital. One interesting fact about Sacramento is that Sacramento, with a population of five hundred thousand, is California's sixth state capital. It's not the original capital. Chris, what are the capitals of California before Sacramento? Monterey, Vallejo, Benicia, San Jose, and San Francisco. There you go. So Sacramento, you are number six. Who's going to be number seven? Are we going to pick a number seven for a state? We built a capital building and, and now we're done. Uh, if you are flying in, like if you want to visit California Central Valley and you're flying in, Sacramento's the biggest airport in the Central Valley. So you could fly in there, uh, though you could also fly into San Jose. I did that uh, previous trip to uh, Modesto. You could fly into Oakland. Um, I'm going to do that for, I think, another trip I've got coming up to the Central Valley where I'm just going to be in there for a couple of days. You could also fly into LAX to the south and drive up. It's maybe 
two and a half hours from LAX to, to Bakersfield. We, we drove in from the LA area. Uh, Brandon says the fact about the Millennium Falcon I didn't know about. I can't claim that it's inspired by almonds, but I can tell you, like, if you look at the Millennium Falcon, it does kind of look a little bit like an almond. These are the things you think of when you're doing nothing but talking about almonds for an hour. Um, <laughs> the Uniplex says, I thought the largest displays for Buddha was at my sister-in-law's. That's funny. I'll, I'll have to visit your uh, I'll have to visit your sister-in-law's uh, and make a segment there. Jenny Fence says, so many Buddhas. There were a lot of Buddhas. Um, and uh, Christina says, I showed some art pieces that inspired Norman Rockwell. Indeed, uh, really interesting to be included because I did a presentation on Norman Rockwell a few months ago. Very cool, Christina. Very cool. All right. The 21st interesting fact about California Central Valley is that uh, we're now in Yolo County, which is just to the west of Sacramento. This is where we did our most northern uh, night. So west of Sacramento, uh, this is home to UC Davis and has a population of 200,000 UC Davis, University of California Davis for our maybe non-Californian uh, or American friends. Uh, so big, uni one, of the, one of the big universities in California. Uh, and by the way, no, Yolo County doesn't stand for uh, you only live once. Yolo County is actually based on a Native American tribal word for a place abounding in rushes. We didn't find any big Yolo signs, but we did find a sign for greetings from the Winters Market. We stayed in the town of Winters. It's a neat little town. 22nd thing that's interesting about uh, California Central Valley, particularly Yolo County, is that uh, Yolo County uh, ought to be called the Big Canned Tomato because Yolo County's number one agricultural product is processed tomatoes. So somebody's got to can all these tomatoes. Uh, and actually in the Stockton Hagen Museum, they have like a whole exhibit uh, about machines used to like make tomatoes into like uh, ketchup and tomato paste. The 23rd uh, interesting fact about California Central Valley is that it's home to the United States Bicycling Hall of Fame. This is in the town of Davis, which is the town right next to UC Davis. Um, there are also 100 miles of bike paths in Davis, and the city of Davis has recognition as the bicycle capital of America. That's why the U.S. Bicycling Hall of Fame is there. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. Well, fellow explorers, now hope you know, I hope you know a little bit more about the Central Valley than when you started. If there's something you've been wondering, wondering about our trip, ask it now. If you asked it before and I didn't answer, put another question mark through it and we'll put it up on the screen and talk through it. Uh, Samuel's joined in from New Jersey. Welcome, Samuel. Jeff's joined in from Fresno, the real Central Valley of California. Welcome, Jeff, from Fresno. Uh, Mike has a real kind of like American melting pot family from different places. My, my wife's from Sacramento. I'm from Laguna Beach. We met in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Very cool. Um, uh, Jenny Fied, uh, many of her family members went to school there. Colin's joined in from Canada. Welcome, Colin. I uh, love the tour, LA tour videos. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, Garrett says, I love Disneyland. The Uniplex says, what's your next trip? You know what? We haven't planned one yet because just the nature of the world with everything kind of opening and things like that, we, we haven't wanted to put one on the schedule yet because we're like, we don't know what's going to open yet. Nominally, we're going to take some summer trip here coming up, but we haven't really figured out quite where that is yet. Uh, Points Traveler says, how far is the Central Valley from Lake Tahoe? Um, that is a good question. Uh, it is, well, so... Um, Lake Tahoe is east of Sacramento, so Lake Tahoe to Sacramento was about mm, two hours, uh, so two hours to the east or 120 miles from Sacramento, we'll get to Lake Tahoe. That's how we've gotten to Lake Tahoe before. We've flown into Sacramento and driven into Lake Tahoe. Uh, Irving says, have you ever been to Traver, California? Irving, you must have not been watching my series on 
the Central Valley. Because if you have, if you watched my road trip on the Central, I encourage you to go watch it. We visited Traver. We visited the seven-story treehouse. Trevor, California. Go check it out. We also visited the almond blossoms in Traver as well. So for sure. Um, Magellan says, what's your favorite national park in California? We really like Death Valley. That's our favorite. Uh, Jeff is sending love from the map pack. Thanks, Jeff, from the map pack. Say hi to Matthew for me. Um, uh, Mark asks if Koalinga is still fun to drive past. I don't know. I didn't, we didn't visit Koalinga, and I guess I maybe didn't pay attention as we were driving past. Uh, Stanford Bridge says, is San Joaquin Valley part of the Central Valley? My memory is uh, muddled on that. Yeah, so uh, San Joaquin County is the county that Stockton is in. The Central Valley is divided into a few different valleys. And so, yes, the San Joaquin Valley is part of California's Central Valley. Uh, Irving says, I missed it. I'll watch it. I've seen that tree. You can see me in it in that video. So go check it out. Uh, Christina says, what cities do you recommend in Canada for the summer? We've only been to a few cities in Canada, um, but uh, I would recommend the two. We just came back from Vancouver and Victoria. As soon as we wrap up this Central Valley series, we're going to get back to publishing that series. So you'll see uh, Vancouver and Victoria travel guides coming real soon. Uh, Christina says, other than Vancouver, Victoria. There you go. How about that one? Another big one, um, you know, last summer, like you want to go to beach cities. Uh, if you want to fly all the way, you know, over to the... Um, like to the other coast, you know, we really want to go to Montreal as like the big like French city in Canada. That I've, I've, when I asked fellow explorers here from Canada, what Canadian city should we go to next? I got the most recommendations for Montreal. Um, and Magellan the Greyhound said, awesome. Thank you. We went there in December. Have done Joshua Tree too, but none of the others. As uh, they're good. And, you know, and as I visit some of these, as we do with the Traveling Princess, we're doing more road trips. I will tell you all about the ones we visit. You can make your decision which one you want to go to. Uh, John says, uh, Calgary, Vancouver, Vancouver Island, or Northern BC are awesome. Thank you for that, John. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, it is time for a giveaway. And for you to answer this giveaway, you will have to have watched my Central California series leading up to this live stream. And so my question for you is in the Central Valley series, in the last video that I published on Friday of our epic road trip, I was wearing a black t-shirt in one of the cities. Which city in that video was I wearing a black t-shirt in? If you can answer that question correctly, you will win a Yellow Productions Crew shirt shipped to you anywhere in the world. So on that, go ahead and answer the question. And if you're like going to say like, Chris, I need to go look at those pictures right now. You know what, go ahead, see if you can watch the, see if you can watch the video fast enough to beat your fellow travelers if you need to. Um, uh, first answer, wrong one, uh, Jorge says, uh, or Giorgio says Modesto, not Modesto, try again. Um, and now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Next answer, Kathy from Australia. Congratulations, the answer is indeed Stockton. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to see that, there we go. There's the picture uh, of me in the Stockton wearing a Stockton shirt that I just thought was cool. And I thought it would be interesting to see if anybody gave me crap about wearing a black shirt. And you know what? Nobody gave me any crap about wearing a black shirt. I'm disappointed in all of y'all. Maybe you actually think, maybe I shouldn't be disappointed in everybody because everybody's like, Chris, you actually, actually look good not wearing yellow once in a while. Well, Kathy, congratulations. You can win a Yellow Productions crew shirt, or if you'd like another Yellow Productions item, because I know you've won a few in the past, you are entitled to one of those as well. Send me an email, chris at yellow-productions.com, and I'll get that heading out to the land down under. By the way, if you're wondering, Chris, when is the next live stream going to be? Head over to update.yellow-productions.com. Join my mailing list. I will send you an email every time a new live stream is coming out. I won't spam you. I won't sell your email address just to let you know when new live streams and new videos come out. And if you've been wanting one of those Yellow Production shirts or a mug and you didn't get to win one, you can pick one up over at the Yellow Production shop. But if you don't want to do any of those things and you haven't done it yet, 
please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps, really helps. There are 113 of you on, 68 likes. I just saw it go up three more, so some people are listening, uh, but if you're listening too, please give it a thumb up and bump it. Uh, and Colin says, is it the same time every Tuesday? Not always the same time every Tuesday because different things happen in our life that make it different times and different days. So head over to that update list and you'll know a couple days before what day and time it's going to be. Well, fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you in the next video.